Spotify versus Apple Music, two of the most popular streaming services according to real statistics and a poll I did a few months ago. After extensively testing both services, I want to help you decide which streaming service you should invest your hard earned money into because I know once you invest in one, you'll probably be stuck with it for a very long time. So I don't know, should you switch to Spotify if you're already an Apple Music subscriber and vice versa? That's what we're gonna find out today. And at the end, I'll tell you which one I use on the daily and justify my reasoning behind that. But right now, I'm actually going to just spoil this entire video right now. I genuinely think that both Spotify and Apple Music are both very well designed and easy to use. Spotify and Apple have proven time and time again that they are capable of creating really good music streaming apps. Both have distinct layouts However, functionally, they do pretty much the same thing. You can access your recently played playlists, search for songs and playlists, see their recommended songs and playlists for you, find different genres of music, find your music based on playlists, artists, albums, and more, find new releases from artists you love, see the top charts by country or globally, and so much more. Furthermore, you can heart songs, add songs to playlists, rearrange the songs, remove songs, cue songs, go to album, artists, playlist, share them on various platforms, play songs from different devices and speakers, save music for offline listening, and so much more. These are the fundamental features that a good music app should have, and both of them do deliver. However, they do have their differences, so let's talk about that, starting with Apple Music first. On Apple Music, you can see the full lyrics of a song and you can scroll through and select the lyric and it will jump to that part of the song, which is really awesome. When you view an album on Apple Music, you get a description of the album that the artist probably wrote. I think this is absolutely fantastic because music is like art. It's gonna get deep, but yeah, but music is very serious to me. There's a story behind every album and song. The artists are trying to push a narrative in their music and having a description for the album really helps drive the emotions into their listeners. For example, this is Nicki's album on Spotify. It just has the album, but on Apple Music, imagine reading this before listening to the album. Indonesian singer-songwriter Nikki's conceptual debut album, Moonchild, mines three of the moon's phases as a metaphor for personal evolution. The first offers four songs that encompasses a sense of wonder and optimism. I'm not gonna read all of it, but you can probably see what I mean. Furthermore, you can watch their music videos right from the app. Of course, you could watch it on YouTube or Vivo, but it just has it on one spot so you don't have to jump through different apps to view the same content. But what's really awesome that Spotify doesn't have is the more to see section. For example, this video of Nikki talking about her song, If There's Nothing Left, is only found on Apple Music and nowhere else on the internet. This is an Apple Music exclusive. Again, another way the artist is able to connect with the audience. In addition, there is iCloud syncing, so the local songs on your computer will also show up on your phone. In Spotify's defense, you can also have local computer files synced up on your phone. And since Apple Music is Apple's native music app, whenever you connect any kind of AirPods, headphones, or speakers to your phone, a splash screen will come up on your lock screen and you can quickly jump back into your most recently played playlists. This is straight up just awesome. Of course, this is just a small handful of the many features that Apple Music has, but I'm just trying to condense everything into a short YouTube video. Now let's talk about Spotify. There aren't full lyrics on Spotify, but instead there is behind the lyrics, which is powered by Genius. We all know Genius, right? It's the music lyrics service app that brings the meaning behind the music. That genius. Also, when you play some songs, the entire screen becomes a moving artwork. They call this feature Canvas. Functionally, this doesn't do anything other than the fact that it looks really cool. Apple Music has something kind of like this, but it's only on the album cover 
And at the moment, it doesn't seem to be as common as the canvas feature on Spotify. This is again an aesthetic choice and if you don't like it, you can always just turn it off in the settings. Next, you can search for specific songs in a playlist by title, artist, or album. Plus, you can arrange the playlist by date added, title, and more. These are things that I actually use very often because it just makes finding songs so much faster and easier. And with Apple Music, the order of your playlists is just the order it's in unless you manually reorder it. Also, you can hide songs on Spotify, so if you don't like a particular track, you can hide it and it won't play. Spotify also has Spotify made playlists called On Repeat. And I don't know about you, but when I'm obsessed with a song, I legit listen to that song over and over again. Like, please tell me I can't be the only one that does this. So having a playlist that updates my most repeated songs after every few days is just perfect for me. Also, Spotify has both music and podcasts in one app. On the other hand, Apple has two separate apps for music and podcasts. I personally don't listen to podcasts that much, but this could be a pretty big deal to some people. And Spotify has a free version to let you dip your toes into the Spotify waters. So even if you don't have Spotify premium, at least you can still listen to some music on the go. Apple does have Beats 1 radio though, you can't forget that. This entire time, I've been talking about the phone experience, but what about the laptop experience? Well, navigation on Spotify Premium on the computer is just so much easier than Apple Music, mainly because there are forwards and back buttons on Spotify. If you're on a playlist and you go into another playlist and you click into an artist, go into their albums and go to a featured artist's page, you can go straight back to any of the pages you were just on and back again. Now, this is just astronomically astonishing because just imagine not having navigation arrows on your web browser and needing to search up the website you were just on previously like every single time. And sure, you can find your playlists on the sidebar again, but this would be a problem if you have a lot of playlists, like me for example. On Apple Music, a back arrow only appears when you view the media on Apple Music, but it disappears once you go back into a playlist. So it's just not the same on Apple Music because it works everywhere on Spotify. And there are a few more things that are deal breakers for me, which I will get back to. So to revisit the original question, which music streaming service is better and which one is better for you? Honestly, as you can see from our discussion, both music streaming services trade so many hard blows that you honestly can't go wrong with both of them. While Apple Music has more media, such as music videos and exclusive behind the scenes content, on Spotify, it's just generally easier to navigate and find your way around the music in your playlists with the searching and sorting feature. And while Apple Music has full lyrics, Spotify has podcasts in the same app. So based on what I told you before, you need to make your own choices as to which features are more important to you. Now for the music app that I use every single day. Drum roll please. It's Spotify. And there are many good reasons for that. Other than the points that I talked about earlier, Spotify just makes me feel more connected to my music listening friends. Simply put, Spotify just has more users, and most of my friends use Spotify. Music is supposed to connect people together and start discussions, but with Spotify, you can see the songs that your friends are listening to in real time, and that will help you discover new music and discover songs that your close friends are listening to. Usually, when my friends want to show me a song, they will send me a Spotify link, which will open in Spotify anyways. On Apple Music, I just feel like I'm in my own little bubble listening to my own music. Sure, you can find your friends and their playlists on Apple Music, but it just doesn't feel like it's as frictionless as how Spotify integrates it. And to further reinforce the connection between the artists and listeners, there is probably my favorite thing about Spotify, which is Spotify Wrapped which is the summary of your music consumption of the year. It tells you your top tracks, top artists, the number of minutes you spend listening to your music, and so much more. 
In Apple's defense, Apple does have something similar to Wrapped that is a little bit less talked about, and it's called Replay. And it's a website that you need to go to. You can see your top songs and artists, which is really dope. But Spotify just makes a fully specialized video that is specific to just you. Your favorite songs of the year are playing in the background while there's text to hype you for the reveal at the end. There is even a quiz with clickable buttons to quiz you to see if you know who your favorite artist of the year is. Like that is just awe-inspiring. And this is personally a really big deal for me and it makes me look forward to my Spotify wrapped at the end of every single year. And again, everyone posts about it at the end of the year on like their Instagram stories and I just love discovering the diversity of music that my friends listen to. Also, if you see that your friend is listening to the same artist as you, then that's another thing to talk about between you two. So in conclusion, I know people that swear by Apple Music, and I know people that swear by Spotify. While it's fun to see the number of tracks, price, and music bit rates that each service provides on their respective websites, there are just some things that you can only learn by actually trying and using the app for yourself. And that's why I highly encourage you to start a free trial on each music streaming app or just try it out for yourself. There's literally nothing to lose. And if you're worried that your playlists are not going to transfer over, there's actually a website called Tune My Music and you can very effortlessly transfer your playlists between most streaming service platforms, including Apple Music and Spotify. You should really give it a shot and you might discover that you've been using the wrong app this entire time. So that is my take on the whole Apple Music versus Spotify debacle in 2021. Remember that things are prone to change and apps could be updated with more features in the future. If you've made it this far to the end of this video, then bless your soul. Thank you so much for watching. If you agree or disagree, or if you have anything else to add to the discussion, let me know down in the comments below. And if you're new here, what's up? My name is Jason. I make videos about my university life, productivity, and part-time tech videos just like this one. And I actually want to get back into more like vlog style content, especially when I get back to school in September. So if you like my content, you should definitely join me in my adventures by hitting that subscribe button and enabling the bell notifications because that will really help me out. You guys are like my day ones if you're new here. And absolutely pulverize that like button. And as always, I will see you in my very next video. Peace.